I want to welcome everyone to our Red Nucleus as Structured Product Labeling Challenges and Solutions. So as we move forward, I'd like to review our agenda. So we're going to start out and give a brief introduction as part of our welcome. We're going to talk about SPL challenges, the history of SPL labeler code and DC code numbers, establishment registration, content of labeling, principal display panel, and drug listing. Then we're gonna close out and demonstrate, uh, give a brief demonstration of Directus Pro and how Directus Pro manages structured product labeling. And we'll, as we have time, we're gonna take some questions from the audience. So again, I wanna welcome everyone. We are super excited to host this. And I'd like to go and introduce you to some of our presenters. To start, we have Alex Webb. Alex has 20 years of pharmaceutical experience with a focus in global submission and life cycle management, electronic document management systems and regulatory information management. Alex is detailed oriented, proactive, dedicated and team focused, which has enabled him to successfully lead and deliver numerous global submission filings. Alex has implemented processes and solutions to address structured product labeling and drug testing. Alex's expertise includes, but is not limited to, labeling, publishing teams and global submissions, establishing and implementing submissions related processes and standards, providing guidance to business on selection of document management system, publishing tools, and submission viewing tools. Alex's technical expertise ranges across numerous publishing tools and softwares, Documentum, cloud-based document management systems, global submit submission package, ECTD Express, ISI Publisher, ISI Toolbox, Evermap, Adobe, Acrobat, and Microsoft Word. Now we'll move on and I'd like to also introduce Perosia Solomon. Perosia has consulting experience with skills in the development of end-to-end -end labeling systems. Directus Pro, supporting implementation, validation, and maintenance of Viva Vault, as well as a broad experience in the development of training material. Perosia is the product manager of Directus Pro, which is an all-in-one end-to-end labeling management and XML SPL conversion platform. She has experience in drug labeling and management processes and an extensive background in biotechnology research. Perosia is certified white belt in Viva Fault in 2020, software testing in 2016, and SaaS-based programming in 2017. Lastly, I am responsible for the commercialization of Directors Pro at Red Nucleus. I've had the privilege to support pharmaceutical manufacturers for over 20 years in R&D and commercial transformation, AI, machine learning, data management, and enterprise collaboration and content management to include labeling and submissions. Red Nucleus is a unique firm that has been in the business for 30 years with more than 450 employees. We are rapidly growing, dedicated 100% to life sciences and specifically pharmaceutical. We are proud of our accomplishments being a great place to work for 11 years in a row with charity and volunteering core to our values. Red Nucleus is a global company we have three offices in the United States, Boston, Massachusetts, Yardley, Pennsylvania, Malvern, Pennsylvania, and offices in Toronto, Canada, London in the United Kingdom, Stockholm, Sweden, Prune, India, Tokyo, Japan. And more recently, we have added an additional location in Perth, Australia, where our team and actually clients ask us to have trips to. I am pleased and proud to turn the meeting over to Alex to kick off our journey in structured product labeling. 
Thanks, Sean, and welcome, everyone. I wanted to start off the webinar by reviewing how the SPL guidances have evolved over time. In uh, 1999, FDA accepted electronic content of labeling in portable document format, otherwise known as PDF. In uh, June of 2004, FDA um, required that the content of labeling be submitted in a form that can process and review an archive. PDF was still the current acceptable format, but FDA was uh, stated they were looking to, for a new file format in the future. Uh, the goal was to improve patient safety through better access to the product information and a faster way to distribute up-to-date and all-inclusive medication information. Uh, in 2005, FDA adopted a new technology and required that submission of physician and patient labeling be submitted in XML format. And this new standard was called Structured Product Labeling, or SPL. CEDAR adopted this in 2005 with CBER um, requiring it in 2008. Through 2007-2009, Transition began for the establishment registration and drug listing information to be submitted in SPL format instead of the lengthy paper process. The final guidance released in 2009 with um, electronic being the only format. In 2016, FDA required that the annual update to drug listings or the certification that there are no changes have occurred for the product um, that were initially listed um, or updated during the past calendar year. In 2019, FDA announced that for drug listing yearly renewals, any outdated or unconfirmed information will be pulled from the NDC directory. Um, as I stated earlier, FDA is always looking for faster or more ways to uh, distribute up-to-date information. Uh, so I would definitely expect the SPL guidances to expand. So some advantages of SPL. So ability for the information to be shared between computer systems and databases. So with all this new information, um, FDA can actually branch out and pull the information to different databases. So your drug listing information can be shared out to the NDC directory. Um, information can be processed over for importing and exporting. And you can also make connections between DEA schedules or actually the establishment registrations and whether the information is up to date and correct. Um, this also reduces the amount of time it takes for FDA to receive and process your information. There is accurate and up-to-date inventory for market drugs. It eliminates data errors. The automation of the comparison of labeling text and the comparison of specific data elements. And information can be exchanged through multiple submissions. So for instance, um, content of labeling, the principal display panel, and the list drug listing information, they're now all in one file. Um, registrants can list all establishments in one file. You know, there are no more paper, you know, multiple paper forms to fill out. The blanket no change in, for drug listings, drug sample distribution information, bulk and ingredient listings, and the lot distribution reports, to name a few. So there are some primary um, SPL activities for most companies, um, and here are a couple of them. So usually you're going to start with the NDC labeler code request. Then you'll want to register your establishments. And then there's the content of labeling with the drug listing package. So let's dive into these. The labeler code and NDC number. So a labeler code is a four or five digit code that identifies the company responsible for distributing the product in the United States. It is required in order to complete the national drug code or NDC number. A company can't create their own labeler code. So they have to, it has to be assigned by the FDA, which means that you're gonna have to submit a labeler code request. Next slide. So here's an example of a labeler code request. The labeler code request is actually a two-step process. So in your first step, you're going to create the initial request down to the SP in SPL format with required information. So the SPL data uh, elements include the labeler name, the labeler DUNS number, the labeler contact name, their address, and their phone number and email address. You also want to include the business operation and business qualifier. 
So the business operation and business qualifier, they are both standard SPL terminology and can't be manipulated. So you'll end up picking them from like a drop down list or from a code set. It is important to make sure that the labeler information matches exactly what is in the DUNS record or else your initial labeler code request can be rejected. So if you're unsure um, whether or not your information is correct, there you can always visit the FDA DUNS portal um, for you to search and compare. You'll also, during the initial request, need to uh, add the information for a U.S. agent if it is applicable. And another important note at this time is to leave the NDC labeler code blank as uh, you have not yet received one, um, and this will cause a rejection if submitted with information in the field. Once you submit your first initial request, FDA will notify the labeler contact, usually via email, um, with an assigned labeler code. Even though the FDA assigned a labeler code, the number cannot be used until the labeler has confirmed the assignment. So it's an extremely important step to follow the second request. Um, and this is where you'll add your labeler code um, to your original labeler request. It is important um, that you use the original SPL that you sent down as this will have the set ID that was used previously. And all that should change is with the addition of the labeler code is a new ID route and new version number. Um, the version number usually submitted in your first request will be one. So anything from two or higher um, will be uh, will will be able to pass validation, and there should also be a new effective time associated. After the updated SPL passes technical validation, the new labeler code should be listed on the NDC NHRIC labeler code spreadsheet, and this usually takes about five to seven days. Next slide. So some labeler code requirements. So changes to the labeler code information need to be submitted within thirty days of change. So examples of, of changes could be that the, there's a new labeler contact or that the labeler contact information has changed, maybe a new email address, phone number, um, or maybe you have a new US agent. The labeler codes will only be assigned if the marketing application will be submitted within, the, within two years. Um, FDA can tell you that to just reapply if that's not the plan. If a drug is not listed within two years, FDA will reach out, again, usually via email to the labeler contact to verify if it should remain. If there's no res um, response from the responsor, the labeler code will be inactivated and a re reactivation request will be needed in order to uh, get it back on uh, their radar. So keep in mind that the FDA does again notify the, cont uh, the contact that is on file from the labeler code request. So a challenge companies may face is the contact may no longer be with the company. And if the labeler request was not updated with the new contact, the FDA email may get lost or never delivered, which could cause product distribution delays down the line. So NDC numbers. So now that your labeler has been assigned um, to your, uh, for your labeler code, there, um, you're able to complete the actual national drug code or NDC number. Uh, the NDC number is a unique 10-digit three-code segment number that acts as a drug product identifier and is required in order to electronically list drug products. The three-code segments can be configured using either a 442, a 532, or a 541 structure. The first segment of the NDC number is the assigned labeler code. The second segment is the product code, and the third segment is the package code. So the first segment, we know it being the labeler code that FDA has assigned to you. The second and third um, segments, they are actually assigned by the labeler themselves. NDC numbers are submitted to the FDA within the electronic drug listing. And as long as the NDC numbers are not reserved for a different drug, FDA will assign and reserve the NDCs for that drug. This information can be searched on the NDC directory page. NDCs need to be verified annually and can now be pulled from the um, NDC directory if the information is outdated or unconfirmed by FDA. Another SPL activity for companies is to register any establishments. So each registrant, the owner or operator firm, is required to submit one SPL file to register all of their establishments. 
Registration is required within five days of introducing product into distribution. So companies will be requested to provide their contact information for the registrant, each establishment, and the U.S. agent if it's applicable. Business operations and business qualifiers will need to be provided for each establishment. And similar to have the labeler code request, they are based off of uh, standard SPL terminology and cannot be manipulated. For the registration, or the, for the registrant section, companies should enter their registrant name and DUNS number, their contact, the registrant contact name, their address, the telephone number, and email address. Each establishment listed should include the establishment name, the establishment's address, the DUMS number, and if applicable, the FEI number, the business operations and the business qualifiers. The establishment contact name, address, telephone number, and email address will also be required. There is one important note here, multiple business operations can and should be selected if performed by that establishment. So if you are, if your establishment is a manufacturer and a label or a, label or a, um, a pack, they, can, they need to be listed all under the business operations. Lastly, if, the US, if there is a US agent, the US agent contact name, DUNS number, telephone number, and email address are required. Next slide. So establishment registration requirements. So registration is required annually before the end of the year. And the renewal period is usually from October 1st to December 31st. Updates require resubmission of the original or previous SPL with changes included. So if there are changes needed to the contact information or maybe um, additional business operations or a change to a business operation, Maybe the company is adding a new establishment or removing an establishment. If there are no changes to the establishments, the company still needs to notify the agency during the renewal period, and this can be done with a no change SPL. Out of business SPLs can also be submitted. So the last SPL activity we'll discuss is the content of labeling principal display panel drug listing package. So we're gonna first start off with the content of labeling. Content of labeling is information that is authored to create a product's prescribing information and if applicable medication guide or patient information. FDA requires physician and patient labeling to be submitted using the SPL standard, replacing the previously used PDF format. Again, CEDAR adopted the standard in 2005 and CBER followed in 2008. SPL versions should be prepared and included for specific submission types. So a couple examples of that would be original applications, um, supplements, uh, final approved content of a labeling, and annual reports. Uh, we do typically see that the SPL versions are usually submitted um, in the original applications uh, in, the, in, the, in the supplements. However, when negotiations are going on um, during the labeling, since sometimes they're fast and furious, um, there is no requirement to, to provide that updated SPL um, unless it is requested um, by the agency. Um, but usually since it does take time to make that conversion and you know, we're trying to, to get the, the submission approved or the product approved, uh, we don't have to submit the SPL at that, that time. But once the submission is approved, you have uh, 14 days to submit the final SPL down to the agency. And this usually is the SPL submitted on its own and it's outside of the ECTD structure and you submit it via the electronic submissions gateway or ESG. And this is, goes directly to the Office of Compliance. And then next up we have the uh, principal display panel. So the principal display panel is the outermost packaging where the packaging that is most likely to be displayed or presented or shown for retail sale. Um, these images are usually either the label or the carton. One image is required for each of the manufactured products in the drug listing. And um, these images should be standalone JPEG files, which are inserted into the SPL itself. And they can usually be found after the content of labeling and before the uh, drug listing data element section. So you can see here from the example, 
above that this is a uh, bottle labels and they are for two strengths, 20 milligrams and 40 milligrams. So finally, the last part of the package is the drug listing information. So drug listing requirements, registrants must submit the initial listing information for drugs and commercial distribution at the time of their initial registration of their establishment. Registrants must update their drug listing information and include drugs that have been introduced for commercial distribution and have not previously been listed. So FDA required that all drug listing information be submitted in SPL format in 2009. To fulfill the verification requirements, drug listing SPL updates can be filed during a calendar year. If no SPL updates were filed during a calendar year, a end of year single blanket, no change notification can be submitted for each of the product NDCs. So FDA introduced the regulation in 2016 that considers the renewal period for the blanket no change to be from October 1st to uh, December 31st. If information is not verified during the required renewal period, products run the risk of being delist delisted. So this is for the drug listing format we're going to build out here. Um, the drug listing section contains labeler, registrant, and establishment information. Um, it's product information, packaging information, and marketing information. So I'm going to go through a couple of, uh, well, most of these right now, just kind of give a, a, an idea of what is required from an SPL standpoint. So for the labeler, the name and DUNS number are required. Registrant, the name, DUNS, um, are required and can be marked as a confidential. The establishment, the name DUNS, the type of operation, and this can also be marked as confidential. So for your product information, this, is, this information will need to be completed for each of the available NDC products. Example, if there are two products similar to how our principal display look, one for 20 milligram and one for 40 milligram, each one will have product information specific to it. So for the active ingredient, we're going to have a name and a unique ingredient identifier or a uni will have to be listed. This information, the uni information, is based on what is available on the FDA substance registration system and the strength of the ingredient. If applicable, you can provide a reference drug information. So for active moiety, like the active ingredient, there is the name and the unique ingredient identifier. And similar to the active ingredient, the same information can be pulled from the FDA substance registration system. And you'll also need the basis of strength. For the inactive ingredient, again, it's similar to the information for the active ingredient, but it can also be marked as confidential. And then flavor, this is based off of SPL code list. Um, but there is the um, ability to add additional text um, if you need to describe more of the flavor. Um, but you could also leave it blank if there is no flavor. So here are some more additional information for your drug listing. So we have the imprint information. So the colors, they are based off of predefined code set and can be a add um, additional text or you can leave the blank if the color is not needed. We have the score. There's the shape, again, based off of SPL predefined code set, um, but you can also add additional text and you can also leave it blank if there's nothing. You can add an imprint if needed. Now, semicolons should be used to show any separation between the words. There's no spaces. The size and size unit, so this is the value is rounded to the nearest whole number, and then you would add millimeter to the size unit. You can also leave it blank if it's not needed. For packaging, you'll start with the immediate packaging and proceed to the outer packaging. You'll add NDC numbers, quantity, and package type. For the marketing information, the product status, you have either active or completed. Marketing start date, when you plan to market the product, Marketing end date, this should be the expiration date of the last lot released to marketplace and provides a date for when the 
when to either remove the SPL or maybe just the product from the listing. So you'll only include this if you need to do one or the other. So you don't have to add a marketing end date um, you know, at the beginning of the process. The marketing category. So the examples for this would just be whether it's an NDA, ANDA, BLA, or like a bulk ingredient. And again, these are based off of a predefined code list. And then there's an application or citation number and code system. The application, so this would be the application number with the application abbreviation in front of it. So an example would be NDA, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, there'd be no spaces or dashes. So here's a quick uh, flow of uh, how the information gets um, from the company all the way to the different databases. So again, one of the advantages of SPL is their ability to, for the information to be shared between computer systems and databases. Company creates their separate SPL files. So we have here the content of labeling drug listing going one way and the establishment registration going the other. They are submitted down to FDA via the electronic submissions gateway or ESG, where the information is validated to determine if there are any technical issues. Once successfully validated, it is stored in the e-list system and from there shared amongst the different database sites. So for example, if you have, if you submit down your full content, your final full content of labeling principal display drug listing package, it'll go through this and be posted out to the daily web a daily med website. The NDC product information can be pulled from your drug listing and added to the NDC directory. When you submit your establishment registration, this, app, this information can be added to the drug uh, establishment site. This information is also available when going through the technical validation. So if you did submit down your establishment registrations and you chose business operations, um, and you submit down your content and labeling and the business operation doesn't match what is currently registered, then the information can ping back um, and cause a technical issue. Again, this is just to improve the patient safety through better access to the product information and provide um, a faster way to distribute up-to-date and all-inclusive medication information. So some outsourcing considerations. So when working with a vendor who provides not only the SPL services, but also full submission capabilities, there are some benefits with strategic partnerships and flexibility. Um, most vendors require spreadsheets for sponsor to dictate drug listing data. And this can be extremely time consuming for the sponsor. So with the most of the drug listing information able to be pulled from the content of labeling, as well as from the CMC section of the application, um, vendors can take the, uh, a stab at it and prepare, um, prepare the information and hand it back to the, the, the sponsor um, to provide uh, a faster turnaround and uh, allow them not to have to spend so much time um, completing that spreadsheet. If changes need to be done, it's very quick. So changes impacting the drug listing are easily identified and centrally managed. So a vendor could um, the vendor should know when they are uh, working on a labeling supplement that an updated SPL is required. And depending on the changes, if the drug listing needs to be updated as well, or if the, the, uh, there's a CMC supplement, which is adding a new manufacturer, that once the supplement is approved, that you'll have to go and add that new establishment to your drug listing um, after approval and it's submitted to the uh, FDA. Drug listing updates can often be forgotten when regulatory changes are made and there is flexibility to meet the needs of condensed timelines. Next slide, please. We do have some examples of some technical issues. So I did touch briefly on the flow chart that the, there is a step there where there is a technical validation for your SPL files down to the agency. Um, so one issue that we kind of see is the, the, again, the labeler code. So labeler information not matching what's in the DUNS database or that the contact information is, is not up to date. Um, there is the DEA scheduling. So sometimes the product receives a DEA schedule. Uh, the company goes and updates their drug listing to reflect that change. And then the information, though, may not be up to date yet in the EDRLS database. Um, so the technical validation pings 
um, back and says there's an error that this this product is not you know does not require a, uh, a DEI schedule, um, which then uh, holds the label from being posted. You'll then have to follow up with the EDRLS team um, to see if we can get the the uh, update faster, and then you'll end up having to resubmit the SPL again um, once you get the go ahead for the for the label to be posted. Uh, companies update their drug listing to add the establishment operation um, of like a pack to their product um, in the content of labeling. However, they did forget to update the their own establishment registration to to state that the uh, that the newest that this establishment can perform the pack operation. Uh, so the technical validation will ping that. It's a quick, easy fix for companies that have um, their their own establishment. But if they are using an outside vendor for their for their establishment, this definitely could take some time as you have to you know contact that vendor to have them update their their registration to uh, to update for for the new operation that's being added. Again, it'll hold up the label um, and other information from being posted. So we do have some emerging global standards um, from SPL or just overall technology. Uh, so for Canada, for some of their big, big um, transitions. So in 2019, they intend to transition the product monograph template to a more structured, a structured approach using uh, XML and SPL and controlled vocabularies. And they uh, did start their initiation process, which is just the production testing of the XML product uh, monograph project. And then 2021, they went to their phase two with uh, voluntary full production. And in for phase three, the mandatory full production, that's still to be determined as they're still working out, um, you know, how, if there's any changes or information needs to be updated um, during this full, the voluntary process. So for the European Union in 2018 through the 2019, there was the development of the electronic PI for medicines or the EPI. Uh, this is, uh, the EPI is semi-structured. And the European uh, Union is still uh, is still working on uh, an actual harmonized process. So with that, uh, I'd like to pass the ball over to Sean and Pyrosia, who will be discussing how technology efficiently enables the process, the SPL processes we just discussed. Thank you, Alex. Um, clearly, a lot going on here with evolving standards. And uh, one question comes to mind, um, would you agree that while technology has changed, the complexities of managing SPL has not? Over the years, our focus has been to standardize, streamline and enable reuse of content for the end-to-end -end labeling process and that includes structured product labeling. So we move to the next slide, you can share Red Nucleus has more than 20 years of experience uh, industry experience in labeling. And we have been recognized, we have recognized a need for a system which will fill the existing gaps. Red Nucleus Industry Labeling Advisory Committee or ILAC is a forum that brings together industry leaders with a vested interest in labeling and provides them with a platform to work together in an innovative manner to advance the labeling landscape. I would like to share a couple data points from our past industry labeling committee advisory committee or ILAC meetings in which over 30 pharma companies attended as active members and in which several members from the FDA attended as observers. We are excited that the FDA has not missed one of our committee meetings. When it comes to structured product labeling, uh, we're gonna start on the left side. Um, a sponsor company has two choices, one, outsource to a vendor, or two, keep it in-house. Unfortunately, each option has a level of complexity associated with it that would benefit from some level of optimization. According to our poll results, pharma outsources a variety of labeling activities and SPL XML conversion management is the most outsourced labeling activity. Um, as you can see here, proofreading and other areas as well, translation. Um, and then as we consider SPL management, we see delays being the most prevalent SPL pain point, followed by rework, 
which is very costly, and SPL spec challenges as far as, and we can see that with, um, with how the standards are uh, evolving and, and all the data points in those standards. An additional data point we collected is that an SPL solution uh, basically, uh, it needs to include the health authorities uh, in their involvement. And while viewed as not easy, most of the industry would welcome an innovative solution. Industry leaders have voiced a need for an optimized SPL management solution. More importantly, no participant in our committee thought that the industry did not need an SPL solution. So as we move to the next slide, for those of you that know us, you would be familiar with our proprietary toolkits. This is our labeling toolkit. I share as this deep process experience, especially under leveling operations, SPL management, drug listing management on the left side, um, have evolved into the foundation of Red Nucleus end-to-end -end labeling platform, Directus Pro. Key features are included in blue and include document compare and proofing, automated CCDS workflows, automated RPI workflows, label alignment, manage notifications, distribution, and automated data management. As discussed, many companies spend a significant amount of time taking a label out of their current document management system and sending it to an internal or external operations team to convert the label to XML for SPL package. As companies plan for operational excellence, they need to consider moving to technology that support the future state requirements. With regards to XML and SPL management, companies need to consider structured content authoring, whereby they author directly in an XML-like backbone, which enables them to quickly and seamlessly convert the word-like label to an XML or SPL format without ever having to leave the system. Directus Pro is the only system that enables this end-to-end -end workflow. The system provides a word-like word -like XML-based backbone that enables collaborative authoring in what appears to the author to be a Word document, but really is a structured framework. Today, we are going to share this specific functionality of Directus Pro and how authors can collaboratively author in a Word-like document that exists on an XML backbone that is also componentized and structured. After we author the document, we will review the document in XML with the Directus Pro viewer. So if we can go to Directus Pro, please. So we're starting out on the home screen when we log into Directus Pro. And, and I just wanted to uh, just uh, orientate everyone. Uh, we're gonna spend most of our, we're gonna spend our time in the RPI management today, but there's an inbox, the inbox, all key messages, uh, alerts, everything is coming to our inbox. Mm -hmm. Um, a very important aspect of labeling is to integrate uh, safety signals and, and issues with the product that come up. And Directus Pro has this integrated with it and allows the end user to make sure that things don't fall through the crack as far as safety signal management, that, that the impact of any adverse event is going to make it to the product label and it gets closed out. There is a complete document management library in Directus Pro as far as all the communications, all the content that's developed. There's a CDS management as well. And I'm gonna skip over the RPI management as we're gonna go into that. And on the bottom row, we have the translations. This is a global end-to-end -end platform. So we're, we're taking labels and translating them. We're taking labels and reusing them and reusing components, so there's tracking as far as the versions and, and where are the labels and what was the source of the label and when was it branched? When did it come back to the branch? And then obviously user management as far as uh, roles and security and setting up your teams. But for now, we're gonna go into uh, the RPI management. So in RPI management, we have, uh, we have uh, if we look just orientating to this, 
you know, the system has been componentized and, and the, the templates and everything in there. And what drives that is what the user inputs as far as a label of the RPI in this case goes. So we can select the countries. We can also look at the company name as well. I'm sorry, the compound name, the brand and the label type. And, uh, you know, under the label type, there are several items that we can select, you know, as far as, uh, you know, a combined label, as you can see here, and we can work at the various uh, types of labels, types that are in the system as well. But for now, I want to focus also just for a moment on the workflow, uh, complete life cycle workflow, as far as creating, authoring, uh, reviewing, uh, QCing, um, and then uh, approvals, and then and then moving into moving into uh, you know the being submission ready, and also uh, the final QC, and then uh, the exchanges or the exchange with the health authority. Uh, the unique thing about Directus Pro is everything is linked together. So if you're in a document, you can see related documents, and you'll see some of that as we get into creating a document. So let's just create a document for us to now convert into the XML SPL. So we're gonna select and select and share some minimal necessary data. But the data that we're entering is all configurable. And we're going to send, we're gonna basically off this document. Uh, Paroj and I will be authoring this document so Perosia will be, uh, you know, including me in the authoring process so we can author and collaborate on this document at the same time. So we entered the minimal necessary data we need. Again, this is configurable. Uh, the system can be configured. You can see on the left side some of the related information around the template. And then uh, now we're going to go ahead and um, uh, Perosia is going to invite me to work with her on this document. So I'm in the system, I hope, and uh, document's gonna get sent over to me. And the key is that, that this template has already been tagged and all the components. So that is gonna inform the system when we actually send it to convert it to the XML or the SPL uh, format. So let's see here. Okay, I did receive the document, excellent. So I'm gonna open the document like Perosia is and uh, I'm gonna open it up on my end. So I, I'm gonna join Perosia in the document and then I'm, I am going to come in and we're going to open it in the editor and we're gonna jointly work. And you can see that, that uh, if you hover over a certain area that this document has been tagged, like the first section there, yep. It already has been tagged and componentized, but we're, I'm just gonna go in and edit the uh, subject line there just for a moment. And uh, well, uh, S, uh, I love SPL. So I've added, I've made my changes. We've collaborated. I've made my changes. So I'm going to tell the system that I'm done with my changes. And then I am going to uh, complete my task. It's going to tell the system that I'm all set. And um, and then Perosia is going to be working on her end and completing the task as well. And now we can see that that for the two authoring folks, that two of two folks completed their work. So we've completed our work. It's a full audit trail. All the activity that's going on within this document is being tracked. And now we're going to open up the, uh, again, we're going to open it up and we're going to go ahead and convert this. Uh, this has been tagged. And we're going to now convert this and preview this in, um, in XML. As you can see here, the system has uh, taken everything that has been set up in the system as a template, has converted it into XML format. Uh, we can look at this output and compare it to the actual document in the system in order to see how that has come out. And the system under one umbrella, under one platform, everything is happening. And, and eventually we're, we're looking to hopefully also have uh, health authorities be able to access the system and also review this with, with further streamline and simplify how SPL works. So um, we're going to close this up and, and then 
I hope that uh, you know. I hope that this uh, this demonstration has helped see how a lot of the information that we covered is complex and the changing standards and how that is being set up in a single end to end platform. Um, and you know, we hope you agree that the ability to work in one system makes the entire SPL management process much more streamlined. Working in a collaborative structured content authoring platform is not just great for SPL management, but also for the industry, also where the industry is headed in the future with regards to strategic and efficient use and reuse of information. So at this time, I'd like to see if we have any questions. I think we do. I saw a couple of questions that did come in um, and we're gonna put that, we, I think we are gonna put that on a slide real quick and we could uh, uh, review, review those questions here. Okay, so I see what action would I need to take if one of my products gets, or one of my products get delisted? What actions do I need to take? Great, uh, thanks, Sean. I'll take it. Um, so you'll need to prepare and uh, submit an updated copy of your of your SPL. Um, so with this, you could take your most current version of your SPL, um, create a new version, um, add a new effective time to that, and a new document ID route and uh, resubmit it through the uh, ESG um, and uh, have it go through its technical process and, and get posted for you. Thank you, thank you. Excellent, excellent, okay. I have two more that, that have come up, Let's see if anyone others come up, but can the, blanket, can the blanket no change notification contain multiple products uh, and or brands? Yes, all products can go into one notification. Excellent. How would I delist a product? Uh, so this is easy. You uh, would use the marketing end date field in your drug listing section. And the date that you would enter should be the expiration date of the um, last lot released um, in the, to the marketplace. Uh, thank you, thank you. And uh, that's, all that's, that's all the time we have right now. Uh, we respect your time and we like to end on time, but uh, you know, please, please, please let us know if you have any questions, any other questions that are posted in the chat, uh, we will answer. We will answer every one of those. So uh, if we miss that, just because of the dynamics of the meeting, we'll get back to you. Um, and then if you have any feedback as well, and then ultimately, if you'd like to explore a category creating uh, platform, our solution, direct us pro. Like to take a deeper dive, we can do that as well. But we thank you. Uh, we thank you again for taking the time to explore SPL with us. And we hope this was, uh, this was very, uh, this was fun for us. And I hope it was fun for you. Y'all have a great day.